Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can export projects inside of DaVinci Resolve. So, once you're done editing, you should head over to the Deliver tab. Most of what you're going to need in order to export your video is over on the left where it says Render Settings. Now, by default, it's going to put you on Custom, which is going to have the QuickTime.move format. H.264 codec, and generally when you export videos using these settings, they end up massive in file size. I think the reason for that is probably because it doesn't really compress the video, but we can actually change that and get some better settings. So anything you want to change down here, we can save as a preset by going up to the top right in this section. So there'll be a save as new preset option. And then those presets appear over here on the left where it says Chris one, that's my preset, but we can have a list of presets here as well. So if you want to change your video format, you can do so by clicking on the list here. There's quite a few formats, but generally I will use MP4 because that's the most common format out there on the web right now. And the codec will be H.264. Uh, next, the resolution and the frame rate. This should probably match the source material, the footage you are actually using in your video clips. And by default, whenever you add a clip to DaVinci, if it doesn't match your default project settings, it'll ask you if you want to change the timeline settings and thus the export settings to match those clips. Generally, I'll do that. Um, it doesn't make too much sense to take the resolution and increase this beyond what your video is capable of. So if you record it in 720p, then export in 720p as well. Frame rate, obviously some games might be 60 FPS, but a lot of video is just going to be 24 or 30 FPS. So up to you on how many frames per second you want there. The quality of your video is really going to depend. You could just leave it as automatic and you could kind of choose the quality setting. If your videos tend to be too large or something, maybe your bandwidth limited, you can always lower this down here. But automatic best is also a decent setting, just letting the system figure itself out. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing these screencast videos, I'll restrict it down to something like 5,000 KBs per second. Because it's a screencast, there's not a lot of movement, and it doesn't actually need nearly as much uh, bits per second that something like a full-fledged feature-length film would, because there's a lot more movement. But generally, using either of these settings is going to be fine. 10,000 KBs per second is plenty, and automatic best or lowering it down for file size reasons is, op is a fine option. Advanced settings you can pretty much leave alone, but if you're adding subtitles to your video, it's going to be important to come down here and check export subtitle. You can either burn it into the video, which means it'll just be part of the video file itself, like a title that's permanently at the bottom of the screen. You can also do it as a separate file, which is going to put it in .srt format by default, which is kind of the standard online. Uh, YouTube uses that, Udemy uses that, so on and so forth. And then people can choose whether or not they want those subtitles to play with the video, which is kind of usually preferable. And hence, that's the default. So once you have your settings right, if you want to save this as a preset, we can go up to the top right and hit Save as New Preset. So I'll just call this Tutorial Preset. Uh, likewise, you can delete these presets just by selecting it and then coming up here and hitting Delete Current Preset. But if you have your preset ready or you just have these settings for this one individual video, uh, you can go over to the Audio tab next. So on the audio tab, you're probably not going to need to change much. The bitrate of 192 KBs per second, once again, that's plenty for most videos. Unless uh, you need a higher bitrate, possibly because it's a music video and the audio quality is really, really important and that you don't want to lose any information regarding that, uh, then you can increase that. If you have multiple audio tracks in your timeline and you want those to each be on separate audio tracks in the final video output, you can check render one track per channel uh, and by doing that what's just, it's going to take your individual audio tracks and it's going to put it on different audio tracks in the output as well which is kind of useful like if anyone's ever going to edit your video again and they bring it in later it's nice to have the audio separated so you have one track for voices one track for music and so on and so forth it's also possible to manually add output tracks by coming in here hitting the plus button going down to timeline track and then setting which timeline track. So you could just do that a few times like so, and then just remove the original one. And by doing that, you've manually done what this checkbox does anyway. So up to you if you need separate audio tracks or if you just want everything on one track because it's just gonna play on an online video anyway. So when you're done with that, head over to the file tab 
Uh, mostly what I'll just do here is give it a custom name because untitled sounds really terrible. So I might call this tutorial export. And file suffix, if you want anything to go before that video, you can also set this as a default. So, so you could be using this preset and then maybe you'd have like a tutorial preset dash and then that would come before every file name. You can also set a subfolder if you are exporting like let's say to the Chris slash videos folder on your computer. You can nest it inside of another folder. Uh, once again, this is more useful for presets because you can just kind of manually go up here hit browse and then change the file destination on your computer. And uh, obviously you can open that up and select a location from here as well. But once you've done all that, you just need to hit add to render queue. And if you don't already have a location set, it'll give you a pop-up to ask you for a location to export to. So over here on the right where it says render queue, you should see the name of your project, not the name you're exporting to, but the name up here in the top, the project name uh, appear here. And in this title, it also specify your time, which timeline you're exporting because in DaVinci Resolve 15, it is possible to have multiple timelines, which is something I'll try to cover in the future. And if you have multiple renders queued up, you can just kind of go up here to the top right, hit show all projects. And when you hit start render, if there's any jobs ready to go that haven't been completed, when you hit start render, it'll try to do all those jobs. If you only want to export this video though, then uncheck show all projects if it's checked and just hit start render. And then that'll get your file exported to the location with the file name you have. So one final thing I want to show you guys about rendering is you'll see here that there's a box that says render entire timeline down here. So by default, if you add a, a project to your render queue, it's going to be exporting everything from start to finish. But you can also export a section from your video by hitting I for endpoints and then O for outpoints. So I could just export this single clip, add it to the queue, and then when it actually renders, it'll only render that part. But aside from that, that's pretty much everything you need to know about rendering and exporting your videos inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.